Hello everybody, BC here with another YouTube video for you all today and today we're doing our AFC Championship predictions and we're going to be talking about the AFC Divisional Games. Don't worry, the podcast about what happened with the Eagles, the Texans, these head coaching hires will come out. I feel like there's a little bit more I want to talk about that I kind of forgot about. Maybe do a little tribute video about Drew Brees because he probably just played his last game as a New Orleans Saints or actually just any stamp in the NFL at all. So, let's get right into it. Let's start off with the first game of the weekend, which was the Rams at the Packers. The final score was 32-18. to Packers won. My prediction was 24-13. to Packers winning. Uh, so, I got the prediction right. I was about a, at around a score off for one. They both scored about one more touchdown than I thought. If you take away touchdown, it was 25-11, to and that's almost spot on. So, about one touchdown off per team. Um, it was pretty similar to what I was, said it was going to be. Um, Jared Goff played, actually played fairly well. They, he's fine for now, Jared Goff. I'll do a video about this in the future, but if they find the opportunity to get a better replacement, I would be looking at that. Um, and, but Jared Goff actually played a fine game. And, the, but... What shot me a little bit is that defense had absolutely no answer for that Packers offense. Like, the Rams were the best defense in the league. I figured they were at least going to have an answer, and they did not. But I do have to say, it was somewhat entertaining of a game. It was fun watching Aaron Rodgers. I cannot wait to watch them play in Lambeau next week. And like I said, it was kind of around where I predicted. Like I said, the Rams defense had no answer. I expected the Rams defense to be worse, though. Aaron Donald did not play a lot of, like, as, not as much as he should have played in that game. He And when he was playing, he was obviously not able to play at 100%. No one's going to be, like, 100% healthy in the playoffs, but he was not able to play at 100%. And um, that's not something I was really, um, that was something I was looking at. And as soon as I saw Donald go down and possibly not play to not playing 100%. I said to Rams didn't really think at least the Rams had a shot in winning this game. And, but yeah. The, so it was right around where I predicted. And good job. Congratulations to Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. The next game was the Bills-Ravens. I predicted the Bills to win 28-24. to Predicted the right winner. The Bills won. Way less scoring than I thought though. And I really think that's just because I didn't account for the wind that was going on. The scores would have been a little bit higher. Um, give at least six more points to each team. At least give like six more. There was four missed field goals in this game. The kickers combined for two for six. And that is even including Justin Tucker, the probably the greatest kicker of all time. And like I said, two for six on field goals. If you give both of them, both kickers actually went one for three, two. It was an even split. For the kickers, uh, so if you add six points to each one, we're looking at twenty-three to um, yeah, twenty-three to nine. It's a little bit closer. I was a little off on this one. Um, thought it was gonna be. It was a really close game actually. It was three to three going into halftime, and it was. Then the Bills had a very long drive. Took around about uh, took out about half the third quarter. Scored a touchdown. Made it ten to three. And the Ravens scored down, almost tied it up at the very end of the third quarter, but Lamar threw in pick six. Oh, man, I wish I remembered the name. I should have wrote it down. I should have wrote it down. But Johnson on the Bills, I cannot remember his first name, pick six for a 101-yard touchdown, and that made it 17-3 Buffalo, and that was pretty much the change of the game. And that did not help. I think it was on the next drive. Lamar was out with ruled out with a concussion. So, like, that really didn't help. 17-3, to 3, I think, was going to be a tall task for the Ravens to come back from. And as soon as Lamar Jackson went down with a concussion, it was game over. Um, yeah, and that was actually, I think, with the fumbled snap. Lamar, yeah, it was on a fumbled snap, uh, just a bad snap. Lamar Jackson ran to go, but he threw the ball away, but he was not out of the tackle box, so he threw a... It was a intentional grounding, and he got hit as he was throwing it away, and his head smacked the turf in the end zone, like smacked the turf. So, 
Um, that's what happened. That's why Lamar got the concussion. And once, as soon as he went out and down 17 to three, looked like the Bills bring the Bills got the ball back. It, it was game over from there. And it looked like they were going to make a little push towards the end of the game, but as soon as that pick six happened and then Lamar's concussion happened, it was pretty much game over for Baltimore. Great game by both sides. I think the better team did win here. The Bills' defensive game plan on stopping Lamar Jackson was absolutely phenomenal. They used to stuff the run game in general. I said that was a massive worry. And it looked like it, after the first drive, it looked like it was going to be a massive worry for me throughout the game. And then they quickly got their act together and phenomenal run defense by the Buffalo Bills. Um, there would have been a little bit more scoring by the Buffalo Bills, too. Um, like I said, four missed field goals, and nothing against the kickers, honestly. Nothing against Justin Tucker. Nothing, nothing against Tyler Bass, the Bills kicker. It was super windy, and because of the wind, a couple of Josh Allen's deep balls, I think, were affected. Now, he's been really great on the deep ball. There was one one in particular. He threw a couple shots at Stephon Diggs. I don't think a couple of them are a great decision. The one, though, he was wide open. The ball just sailed. It sailed, it sailed, it sailed. And I'm not even blaming it on Josh Allen. It probably would have been a great throw if it wasn't for the wind. Um, so the wind, I think, really did affect the scoring. It really affected the Bills. Um, the, now, the big problem with the Bills, though, not, not, it was the run defense. The run defense played a phenomenal game against Baltimore Ravens, and the Chiefs are not great at running the football. So that now that is not a worry for me until maybe they play if they play a Packers team in the Super Bowl. Um... But for this week, the run defense does not worry me. Um, but they did not run the ball in that first half. And they didn't run it an awful lot in the second half. It was all Josh Allen and the horrible wind conditions we kept putting in the air time and time again. I think there was one rush in the first half, and that was on a scramble with Josh Allen. Like, Josh Allen didn't... Like, it wasn't even a designed run for Josh Allen. Josh Allen was supposed to throw it. No one was open. He ran for, like, four yards. Besides that, they did not run the ball. It was all throwing with Josh Allen. I did not like that. Like, I know the ru- the Ravens' rush defense just stopped for uh, Derrick Henry for 40 yards, and Derrick and the Bills knew they didn't already have a good run. Like, they didn't have a good game, run game already. But you still have to run a little bit, right? I would be okay if they ran it like five, six times. But running the ball just a little bit makes the defense have to respect it a little bit, and that helps you get play actions, passes off. Um, and that's why that's what looked like got the Bills rolling in the second half was more relying on the run game and throwing some play action and Stephon Diggs just on a whole other level. I was talking to my friend. Um, we were talking. He was saying Stephon Diggs didn't have a good day. I kind of went down as I was talking to him before. I was like Stephon Diggs is going to have a good day because Stephon Diggs is I'd probably put him at second right now behind Devontae Adams. Um, he went out there and had another incredible day. After talking to him, I said, I said, he's, he's going to, no matter what, him and Devontae, no matter how good these defenses do, they're going to put up seven catches, 50 yards. So that day put up over a hundred again, phenomenal day for him. And Josh Allen, I think had actually a fairly good day for the conditions. They were in two. I really liked Josh Allen's game. Josh Allen played great, but they did not rely on Josh Allen this week. This was a very big defensive performance for Buffalo. I'm so happy and I'm excited to watch them playing the AFC Championship next week. Um, And now let's go to the first game on Sunday was the Browns-Chiefs. I was watching it, and then I went bowling, so I was only able to play half attention to it towards the end of the game, just to let you guys know. Um, But I still watched it, and I have a very good grasp of the game. Um, So basically, the... Chiefs looked very good. They won 22 to 17 against the Cleveland Browns. My prediction was 42 to 31, which did not happen. Um so basically why the Chiefs look so impressive. I know it's only 22 to 17, yet they only put up 22 points and you're playing Josh Allen next week. Why it was so impressive is, first of all, for the first little bit in the game when Pat Mahomes was in the game, he was hobbled. He was not running around smooth at all. He, and sometimes that foot was affecting how he threw the ball. How Your footwork is massive to accuracy of the football. It's a massive key to success. And his, he missed a couple throws due to that foot hurting, or I think it was his ankle. And then 
about halfway through the third quarter, he also went out with a concussion like Lamar Jackson, and they had to play Chad Henney. And they had to play Chad Henney, and then the Browns were in position to make a comeback then. So what made it so impressive that they were still able to find a win with a either not 100% Pat Mahomes or no Pat Mahomes at all, and they still found a way to win games. Andy Reid's play calling was absolutely stunning in this one. Mm-hmm. Third and 14, Chad Henning runs. They call him a yard short, fourth and one at the end of the game. So how does Andy Reid decide to, decide to approach his fourth and one with a backup quarterback? You throw it to Tyreek Hill, like an actual throw, not a little toss or not a shovel pass. It was a legit throw to Tyreek Hill on a fourth and one to win the game. That is awesome. I do have to say, their offense in the beginning of the game looked very impressive. They looked like they 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 looked like they couldn't be stopped with the script. And this is what I was talking to my friend. I didn't make a lot of football videos, so I didn't tell this to you guys. The Chiefs were barely winning games, and their offense was looking kind of off. And I told him, I told him for a while, and he kind of agrees that the Chiefs were like the best team. And that was something someone we were disagreeing on. But we were kind of disagreeing on the Chiefs being beatable at that point in time. And I said the Chiefs weren't necessarily prohibiting their playbook at all, necessarily. I think they were trying new things, not knowing that they would work. Andy Reid is so brilliant. And first of all, these guys, I think, were a little bored. Like, the Chiefs just made it look easy week and week and week. Especially the first half of the season when they were just, they looked very dominant. And towards the end of the season, I think from a week 11 on, they won all their scores by one possession. And they were playing some bad teams in there, like the Chargers, the Broncos, the Falcons... Um, and all those scores were won games. That Falcons game I was just talking about, they won on the last minute drive. But I said, it's not. That, first of all, I think they're a little bored, so they're playing a little worse. And I think Pat Mahomes and Andy Reid were trying new things. They're calling plays that they're not a hundred percent sure are going to work to see what could work in the playoffs. Like they're just trying plays that they don't know if they'll work or not. If they work, that's fantastic. It's another playbook they can add to the playoffs and pr- pr- probably a Super Bowl. And. Or if they don't work, they know that they cannot try this in the Super Bowl. I remember, I think it was in the Falcons game, actually, going back to that one. They threw a, they threw a pass to Pat Mahomes that got picked off. Like, they're just trying new things, and they're just trying to have some fun, trying to find ways to have fun because they've made it look so easy. As soon as they got to the playoffs, which I said they were going to, they called plays that just worked. They called, That's why you're able to do go on a fourth and one at the very end of the game to win the game, have your backup quarterback throw a pass at fourth and one. It's because the play calls just work. Like, I was watching the game, and I was like, I don't think any defense could stop this. Like, ever. Like, this defense, what they're doing right now on this offense is stunning. Like, they, Andy Reid was calling plays that were going to work. Like, how they were just designed. There was no shot that they were going to get stopped. And by the way, the, uh, um, the Packers did a play like this, too, going back to the Rams game, just for a second. They motioned Devontae Adams across the field once and then they motioned him across again and he was wide open because the Rams were in man coverage. Jay and Ramsey had to follow him all the way across the field and all the way back and there was just no shot that was going to there's no shot that was going to be affected. Jalen Ramsey is going to get the stat of giving up that touchdown. He was not, there was nothing he could have done to stop that touchdown. That's what felt like the Chiefs plays were like every single play in that first half. They just didn't look like they could be stopped. I think the, how they ended up doing it was two touchdowns and two field goals in that first half. Now, I do have to say, that Chiefs defense is not the greatest. They struggled, and they kept the Browns in that game. Like, this should have been a blow on what their offense was doing. It was no domination by the Chiefs, I don't think. I think it could, may have been able to get to a playoff territory. I don't think it was in a dem, demolish, demolition, though. I don't think it was very dominating. Like, they look good. They looked like they deserved to be there. They looked like they deserved to win that game, not taking anything away from the Browns. But they did not dominate the Browns. And the Chiefs can easily lose a game here because the Browns the Browns are really good and the Browns deserve to be on that field with the Chiefs yesterday. But the Chiefs are also no Bills, no Buccaneers, no Packers, the three remaining teams left, and all the teams they have to go through to win a Super Bowl. So the Browns aren't like one of those teams. And... That the fact that they didn't really dominate the Browns even in the beginning. I'm talking about their defense. I'm not even talking about the their offense once Pat Mahomes. Just their defense was not the dominating. 
They also got a lucky uh, head-to-head, helmet-to-helmet uh, play that was not called. And actually, that play turned out to be a touchback, which that was just an unfortunate play for the Browns. He uh, stuck the ball out to get the touchdown for the goal line. And it was a fumble out, in the, out of the side of the end zone. The 20, Chiefs get the ball's 20-yard line. So, and there was a couple drops that are big. Um, there wasn't, like, an awful load of drops. It's not like the drops were, like, it was all drops. But the Nick Chubb drop, I, th- I think I was watching. And like I said, there was parts I wasn't even paying full attention. I think I counted three or four drops by Chubb alone. There was a couple other ones that dropped. Those receivers were not doing Baker much favors. And even with only, like, four drops, say that whole game, Say those say those plays go for ten yards a pop to ten to twenty yards a pop. That's forty to eighty yards of missed offense. And the reason why I brought that up is because Nick Chubb and a couple of the ones he did drop, there was so much space in front of him that like that some of those catches were guaranteed 10, 15 yards, guaranteed if Chubb just caught the ball. So they missed out on probably another full touchdown on a couple drops. And like I said, they should have got a touchdown on that helmet-to-helmet play that turned out to be a touchback for the Chiefs' ball. They should, the Browns should have scored there. And if that happens, the Browns are possibly playing in the AFC Championship this week against the Bills. Like, that game I don't think was any... Like, I don't think it was as dominant as I would have expected, per se, or for me to say the Chiefs are clearly the best team. And now, also, like I said, going back now, is Mahomes got the concussion. So will he play next week? That's the big question. I think there's absolutely no shot he doesn't play. Like, and Pat Mahomes is going to play. But Mahomes or the Chiefs don't decide that. An independent party comes in, and he has to go through a five-step process, and he has to pass that five-step process. And if he doesn't, by an independent party, he cannot play, no matter what the Chiefs and how Pat Mahomes feel. Now, granted, he looked fine after the game, and I imagine he's going to breeze through that five-step process. He's going to play next Sunday against Buffalo. Like I said, I don't think there's really any shot he doesn't play. And listening to other players with concussion protocols, they say that Mahomes will do everything possible to make it at least look like he's pat, like at least make it seem like he should pass those tests, right? And that should allow him to play come next Sunday. Um. And now, last but not least, let's talk about the history fest, Brady at Breeze. I hate to say it. I really, really hate to say it because I love Drew Breeze. And he's going to go down one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Out of this generation of football, of retired, there's three quarterbacks above everyone else. That was Drew Breeze, Tom Brady, and Peyton Manning. Of that era of quarterbacks was better than every other one. Like, those three were the greatest quarterbacks, especially at least of this generation. Before we're, uh, we're, looks, we're obviously heading into a new one right now with like people like Justin Herbert, Pat Mahomes. But before them, since like 1999, when Peyton Manning was drafted, ever since then, to about like two years ago, those are, those are by far the three greatest quarterbacks of that era, of this 20-year period. And But Drew Brees looked, Drew Brees looked his age. Like... I don't want to say he, but he should retire. At this point in time, it looks like he's holding the Saints back. I'm just being honest. The one deep shot the Saints took in that game was they brought Jameis Winston onto the field to make the throw, and it was a touchdown. It was a great throw by Jameis, and I love James. I love Jameis Winston, and I really hope he gets to start again in the NFL one day. I think he is capable of doing so and doing it at a very high level. But. The one deep ball, like I said, they brought Jameis Winston onto the field to make the throw. Drew Brees just can't. You see that, like, he, like, I feel like it would hurt his arm. He looks his age. It looks like he's holding his team back. It's hard to judge, too. I don't want to judge. It's a COVID year, but that team is fairly similar besides from Emmanuel Sanders this last year. Like, honestly, with his weapons. He looks his age, and... That, him him being unable to consistently push the ball down the field. He didn't really push, he actually didn't push the ball down the field at all yesterday. But just his inconsistencies, unable to, being able to push the ball down the field throughout previous games this season, I think kind of held the Saints back this year. And he was in, he's got injured too, though. The fact that he came back this year after broken ribs is stunning and it's remarkable. And, but, 
His inability to push the ball down the field, I think, also led to a couple of those turnovers. There were four turnovers. That was the real reason the Buccaneers won the game. They capitalized off of four turnovers. At least three of those, pretty, at least three of those went to touchdowns. Maybe all, all three of them went to touchdowns. And really, though, it was a it was a good great game. No, it was I think. 13 to 13 at halftime. It was 20 to 20 going into the fourth quarter, and then the Buccaneers pulled away to, and 130 to 20. But if those four turnovers don't happen, partly due to Drew Brees' inefficiencies due to his age, like I said, it held the Saints back and it ultimately lost them the game yesterday. Like I said, I hate saying it because I love Drew Brees. He's going to go down as I loved watching him play. I think his character was amazing on and off the field. But he looked his age yesterday playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And some of the fault should go to Drew Brees for losing that game. I wanted to see... It, it was fun. Now, before the game, I was rooting for the Buccaneers to win it because I thought Tom Brady's story was awesome. It didn't really hit me until after, knowing that that was probably Drew Brees' last game. That made me feel like I wanted Drew Brees to win that, to see him play again. Like... To see Drew Brees win, say Drew Brees won the Super Bowl, that would be that would have been an awesome story, and that would have allowed him to go out on a way better, uh, way better of just a story if he ends off on a high note. So, towards the end, I felt it's hard for me to say I feel bad. He's making millions of dollars playing a game for a living, so it's hard for me to say I feel bad. But I wanted to see more for Brees. But on the other hand, so let's stop seeing, being sad about Drew Brees here. I'm going to do a whole other video on that. I uh, just remembering Drew Brees' greatness he brought to the sport. But first, I, but I, now I also want to talk about the Buccaneers. So Tom Brady's looking good. They capitalized. Now those three of those turnovers put the Buccaneers in the Saints territory, which means they had less than 50 yards to, yards to score the touchdown. Each of those three turnovers and the fourth turnover just behind midfield, like 60 yards they had to go. They gave them great field position, and they capitalized. Tom Brady's looking great. And this Buccaneers team, they dominated the Packers 38-10 to in Week 6. Now, I don't like taking them from Week 6. Bills also lost bad to Kansas City Week 6. And I think the Bills are a way different team and a way better team than they were Week 6. And the Packers, I don't think, are going to be clumsy enough. Like, if you watch that game, the Packers made a lot of mistakes that game. That was their worst game of the season as a whole, by far. So, that's not going to be a reoccurrence of what happened Week 6 at all. I don't think for either of these two games. Even if the same win, say say the Bucks and the Chiefs still win these two games, they're not going to be blowouts like they were the first time around. Um, but they did beat the Packers already, and so they're definitely capable of beating them again. And this Buccaneers team can win a Super Bowl this year. Um, they're very good, and they they showed why why Tom Brady is the goat yesterday against the Saints. Time to go to my last... Oh, and I, I forgot to say, I predicted the Saints last time, 31-30. to 30. It really turned out 30 to 20 bucks. Um, and now it's time to go to my AFC uh, playoff predictions. First game is the Bucks at the Saints. I mean, Bucks at the Packers in Lambeau Field. Um, these are both hard games. These are both great games for AFC championships. I hope they both come right down to the wire for both of them. If the Bills pull away before last seconds, I will be okay with that too. <laughs> but I'm gonna I didn't these ones I don't have before. I'm I'm literally making these scores up, up on the spot. I'ma go 31-27 Packers. Send the Packers to the Super Bowl 31-27. Aaron Rod, that, that offense looks unstoppable and that defense is very good. And I don't think they're going to make a lot of mistakes like the Saints for the Buccaneers to capitalize off of. So, so the Buccaneers are going to have to win this game straight up. I don't think they quite do that. Let's go now to the Bills Chiefs. I want the Bills to win so bad. I, I really do. I'm going to do two predictions for this one. Just, just for the rare occurrence, Mahomes doesn't come back. So we'll do that game first, I guess. If, if Chad Haney's starting for the Kansas City Chiefs, I have 28 to 17 Bills. I think the Bills win that one fairly easily with Chad Haney. Emma Holmes is back, Bill. And he's gonna be pretty he's gonna be pretty much full health, I think. Like be at least healthy enough to play at a hundred percent skill level. 
Oh, man. Oh, man. I do not want to give the Chiefs. To, I'm going to predict the Chiefs here. It was. I did have this predict the 38 to 35, but I was predicting big this weekend, and all of these were more defensive than I thought. I'm, and the first time around, I don't think either of the teams had 30 points. So I'm not going to predict 38 to 35. And plus, it's going to be a windy day in Harrowhead, and both of these are throwing teams. I'm going to go 24 23 Chiefs. Really close. I don't know how the Bills get 23. I don't. I doubt that exact score is going to have a mile. I'm giving the Chiefs a one-point edge with Mahomes. I think it's going to be a great game. I hope it's great. And that would send the Chiefs and the Packers to the Super Bowl for Super Bowl 55. Tell me who you think is going to win this weekend down in the comment section below. Tell me what you took away from this divisional round of the playoffs. And see you all next time. Peace out.